go and move inside of Matt on God's house. That motorcycle right there? That was the cause of death. That's my prediction. That's just my crushed prediction. him. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> so this is... <laughs> wow! <laughs> so this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick. It's signed Shoe, the kitty cat. Shoe! <laughs> hey, you can put it on your headphones. Oh, you yes, can hear yes, the, yes, the meow. Yes, yes. I haven't heard enough meows today, so yep. this is... So I guess this is Shu. Ah, I love the cat. I love Shu. <laughs> the cat seems to like pearls. Pardon me. I knew it. Mm. Oh shit. May I help you with something, Mister? Oh, uh, we're lawyers. Actually, I'm Mister Ungard's lawyer. The masters. Then. <laughs> You must be Mr. Right. Yes. Shut the fuck up, Shoe! <laughs> My apologies. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. Oh, John Doe. <laughs> yes. Nice to meet you. Which I believe it's like a, whenever like a criminal is caught and he's like remaining anonymous. The name is John Doe. Oh yeah, exactly. I, I think that's yeah. what it is. And they, if they don't know the name of a suspect, they call him John Doe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Doe and a Jane Doe. Yeah. My badge. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind taking a look at this. I'm afraid I cannot offer up anything special about it. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of evidence for a trial. Polite yet snotty with a touch of rude. He's the stereotypical butler, all right. And as we all know, the butler always fucking does it. Yep. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. On Guard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh,. Anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for the lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm. How uh, typically butler-like, as it were. Oh yeah, I need to look at stuff. Specifically the motorcycle. Uh, 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 a giant bicycle is flying through the air! A bicycle, Pearls. It's one where you don't have to pedal and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! Sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Uh, that's too bad. Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. That's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You just give me a visit for a minute, then. I'll show you one what you do. It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. Oh yes, Angelina Jolie was here. <laughs> In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ugh, what is with me and feeling inferior today? Mm. Wait, so I'm confused. Hold up, hold up. Yes. If Ongard has a butler, why did he send us to go feed his cat? That is weird, yeah. Maybe he doesn't trust his butler. Or maybe he doesn't actually have a butler. Maybe he doesn't know he has a butler. It must be that, because why would he send us to feed his cat if he has a servant? <laughs> that makes no sense. Well, he wants the food to come from... Very masculine, lovely hands, such as Phoenix's. Mmm, yeah. okay. Ah, the masks, the masks here. It's hard to say mask in that voice. Yeah, yeah, that one in the middle is the Steel Samurai. The ones next to that are the Pink Princess and the Evil Magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo-Old Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. 
I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick. I bet it's for Mr. Ongard's cat to use. Oh, thank you. The door, it's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this door is really... This door is really just not budging right now. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, I'm Top Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say maybe about one year. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lonely servant to speak of himself and his affairs. You know, I would have thought Mr. Ongard the kind to have a maid over a butler. Uh, that's a very cute cat you've got there. <gasps> would be a shame if somebody smothered it. <laughs> <laughs> it is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancies you. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the family cat. Well, then I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Matt Snow crumpled into a ball and thrown him away! Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Huh. So young, and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. There's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler and charge of the house and all. Thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scouring for clues about the killer. Hey, city boy! Lada, you're still here. Wrecking course? An investigative photographer eats or starves on her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah? And this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, like something's always about to happen. But do you have a camera? Wreck even! A photographer's gotta have cameras out to ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feeding the mouth, you yeah, mind you, bread thief? Why can't you drop that thief thing already? Hey, I got it. It's uh, right here. It's right here! Uh, would you please take a look at this? I'm questioning why we still do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, nope, sorry. No can do. Yep, okay, okay. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Here's your camera, you fucking piece of shit. Don't want to play with the rules. Oh, you don't want it. Okay. Wait, what? You don't want it. I guess uh, maybe we'll give it to him when we speak about the camera. I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You really going to shell out the bucks for the info I got? Lada, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kind of, but... Brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know. Followed a few stars around. Got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a sodi pop with a few of them too. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security lady also wasn't in this hallway the whole time either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came and went that night. So, about the note that was inside your camera case? Oh, that ditty I wrote? Yeah, can I believe what you've written? You mean stuff about On Guard shoving his manager lady onto Co-Rita? Yeah. Ah, well, 
I reckon you best not be believing that. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know, writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bulldooters. <laughs> hey, what's with you? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Hmm. Hey, and why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um. Ah, my baby! My $1,600 baby! What's with that red-coated prosecutor anyhow? The guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me! Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey. You're that red coat's friend, ain't you? So put in a few good words for me and give me back my camera. You want me to do what? Listen, nag the guy real good for about five hours, and I guarantee he'll give it back. Why don't you do it your why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Um, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm gonna see you in court tomorrow. Okay, I'll, I'll see you then. And you two there, uh, little, uh, and you, and you two there, little, uh, keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring it with you. Would you please just leave already? Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, home. I guess it's home. It's home now. Okay. <sighs> Mr. Nick! What is that otherworldly, ghastly moaning? This is fucking old bag. I'm gonna kill myself. I, I hate a ghost! <laughs> I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon. Fuck me. me! What are you going bang, to do? Bang, 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 reload, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Like Zoinks, it's the alien! <laughs> Who are you calling an alien? Dude, fuck old bag. Fuck this music that she has for her. Fuck her costume. I fucking hate old bag. I hope she's the next murder victim. <laughs> okay. Fuck her. Oh, I hate her rambling. I hate how you can't read it quick enough, so you have to go to the damn script. So I have yep. to read it, and then I have to hear it. So I have to hear that shit fucking twice. Uh -huh. I hate that she's just this fucking stupid fangirl now. I fucking hate her. Well, Fuck she was old a, bag. She was a fangirl the first time we saw her, but regardless. Yeah, but now she's like full-blown fangirl, dressing up like the fucking Martian. Fuck her. Mm -hmm. Fuck Miss Old Bag. I hope she's put in a body bag in the next case. Fuck her, dude. Mm -mm. Ugh. Oh, it's just you, Miss Old Bag. What are you doing here? What is wrong with you, youngins, today? I came down here to pay my respects to Paul Juan, and you're disturbing me! Uh, oh, I can't even do anything. Uh, Fuck you, Old Bag. Yeah, talk. Please talk to me about the night of the murder just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by the fraud of a photographer in a note. I she was loitering around here with that imbecilic look on her face. That imbecilic look in her face? Okay, got it. And now hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least make me sound better than that. Oh, alright. Now I've seen everything. But you know, I was working that night too, doing my job, minding my own business. So it's not like I had time to waste standing around here the whole night. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Karita. 
He was the most popular star, you know, especially when it counts in my book. But I heard that he was uh, lagging behind in the polls against Mr. On Guard. Well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know. But he was going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presents. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain is pretty big and certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick? Hmm, <clears throat> what is it, Pearls? A presents. They're all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. All of Mr. Karita's presents from his fans seem to be... Bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of one without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know? When my dear Juan was chaining, he fought bare-handed with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win. But after the fight, they become friends. Well, what a hard way we story. Look, it's just like in the, uh, those... Young people dramas! I can see those two tuckled out! Down by a river going, Heh, you. You sure can fight. You do, bub. You do. Did, did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely 8 o'clock. What is that infernal racket? It's one of the presents going off. Sounds like it's over 8 p.m. Way past your bedtime. Ugh, that startled me. I thought I was going to die for a second. 8 p.m. The most haunted hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's the time where the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time sure does fly, huh? <laughs> Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. <laughs> the transceiver. Hello, hello? This is not a phone. Maya! How is Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? It seems you were not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. Oh. I have heard the news. So it would seem my present did you no good. Oh, fuck. No! Oh, Miss no. Maya! Miss Maya! One more day! Please! Only of course one more day, please! I'm gonna throw up. I'll I'll get a not guilty verdict for sure this time, please, please, please. I suppose, if I must. Oh, shit. I need that acquittal more than anything else. <gasps> After all, though. Please. Please let Maya say something. I, I want to hear she's okay. She's alright. Alright. What is it with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems... But... Couldn't... God, God, no. Oh, God. Damn it! Did the jersey were just suddenly break? Excuse me. <laughs> what, what happened? I don't know. All of a sudden, it became nothing but static. <laughs> uh, Mr. Maya, Mr. Maya. <laughs> Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? Damn it. I should probably have an electronics expert look at it. Uh, who made this shit? Nokia! Oh, <laughs> fuck oh, you, Nokia. Nokia! You stupid <laughs> ass <laughs> motherfucker. Fuck fuck you. shit. God damn it, dude. Uh, well, famous electronics experts, of course. Hey, welcome back, pal. 
I thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. That, that, that's nice. Thanks. A rich man's luxurious full course meal out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have the time to eat. Oops. Looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You've got to be kidding. Here I thought he had already whipped something up. Oh, I know. There's one way I know how to help. I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try asking him about. Oh, yeah. Do you know about this card? Card? Edgeworth. For some reason, went pale the instant he saw this card. Hey, I know what this is, pal. You do? No matter what you look at, I'd say it's a picture of a shell. Um. You're a genius. That's it? Oh, yeah. That's right. Mr. Edgeworth really likes those cooked snail things. Uh, what, what are they, well, what do they call again? Uh. Uh, Escarget or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dick! I think we just solved the mystery of why Mr. Edward's face turned pale, right? As I sus- I mean, as I suspected, Gumshoe has no clue. Oh, 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 oh. The transceiver. Oh, Mr. Dick! I should ask Mr. Scuffy the detective about that thing. What thing? Oh, yeah, this thing just- up and broke all of a sudden. It, it broke, Bill? When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. <clears throat> I don't hear any static, Bill. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself. That's strange. I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. Hmm, maybe. Maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, interference pal. Electromagnetic interference? Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? It's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen, the stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? Huh? Computer? Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh! Yes, the TV does do that! Oh, so that's what you're thing? talking about. Yeah. Yeah, you ever had like a um, ever heard of somebody say like my my internet went down because somebody turned on the microwave? No. Yeah, I've had people like it'd be like, oh, hold on, my internet's a bit shitty right now. Somebody's using the microwave right now. What? Yeah, it, it, that's a thing. What kind of fucking high-powered microwave <laughs> people got out there? Uh, uh, uh cooks a Thanksgiving turkey in ten minutes. What the fuck are they using? Uh, two minutes actually. Oh, okay, two minutes, two minutes. She seems. Amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So the room you were in when uh, that interference to the transceiver happened, there's got to be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. Something like, hmm, like a listening device or something? Ah. Hey, speaking of that, uh, where were you when it happened? You were in Mr. Kuita's room. The sin of the murder. <clears throat> what? <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna sneak into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later. Aye, right, pal. Uh, wait, Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby. It's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah! You should be going too, Mr. Nick. Alright, let's go. 
I don't know why he's getting a bug sweep. I, I thought we were looking for a listening device, not some insects. Yeah, what the fuck? Hey, you're finally here, pal. <laughs> hey, you finally made it. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting. The final room of the game. <laughs> Can we have the, um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. Then suddenly, I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, well, I couldn't get one of the yeah, police bugs. It would have been fortunate was. if I was looking at them from the inside. Yeah, really. that would be. <laughs> yeah, that would be preferable. But like, I'm kind of hard to miss, and they yeah. kicked my ass out. Yeah. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. <laughs> hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't get one. Just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper. It looks like a little... It looks a little broken. Now listen, I know that it looks like an old-fashioned remote control with the snowman's arm yeah. sticking out of it. It's like a... Like a... Like a... Like it definitely a looks bit. like... It looks like the death button for a bomb. Oh, with okay. a snowman's arm. I can't stress enough how it looks just like a <laughs> snowman's arm. Like, it might as well have a carrot sticking out of it. But this is a fucking bug sweeper. <laughs> Trust me, pal. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. <laughs> oh, by who? Me, of course. Uh, seeing this show brings back memories. I got hot it. dogs well, at I got lunch. got D minus on it. Getting D minuses and, well, everything. Mm -hmm. Except for physical education. Yeah. I got a C minus in that because, well, I always forgot to wear shorts. And lunchtime. <laughs> lunchtime. I got oh, an A. Oh, man. I got I that A plus. I a 4.0 GPA. <laughs> you know what I mean? Baby. <laughs> when it was Fettuccine Alfredo day. I slipped it. Oh, gummy, gummy. <laughs> Put Fettuccine in his dummy, dummy. Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up, uh, but but I put my heart and soul into building this puppy. Your heart and soul? How I are you sold alive? It to the devil. <laughs> It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But, but, but you can't set the sensitivity, so it's gonna beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? <laughs> Well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? <laughs> I'm getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use this baby. <laughs> There's a listening device or some sort of uh, other bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're gonna find it, right? You bet your ass we will. Now first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough looky see, pal. Uh, the sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up. So keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press enter to look on... Uh there's a lot of things here that's going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious. Okay, pal? All right. I'm going to stand outside and keep an eye on it. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? Okay. I know where it is. Where is it? In the glass. No. <laughs> Idiot. You mean the mirror, you mean? Maybe or, it's that or, phone on the damn... Well, we can also look over here as well. No, I'm in the glass, like the wine glass. Oh, the wine glass? No. Oh, what a shame. What about literally that phone on the chair? A cell phone. Nope, no bugs in here. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's yeah. going to pick up. It's pick up everything. Uh, I got you. A cell phone? Well, it's definitely in a bear. What? Don't tell me you don't know what a cell phone is. 
I'm sorry, I never heard of or seen one before. Now that she mentions it, my cell phone couldn't get any reception while I was staying in Korean Village. And Pearls has never lived outside of that village. So, well, I guess I can't say it's impossible to live without one. Okay, it's definitely got to be in a bear. So, or something that looks out of place. Is there anything here that isn't quite a bear? It doesn't look like a bear. Well, there's one bear that's getting down and dirty. I hate to be that guy, but this little guy here on the right, he's asking for it. Oh, this guy? No, all the way down on the floor on the right. He's in quite the Ooh. position. Yeah, he's... Yeah. Uh, there's nothing here. Um... Well, it certainly looks like an alarm clock. What's wrong? Why do you look troubled? I just can't imagine the listening advice being inside this alarm clock. It just uh, sort of reminded me of something that happened a long time ago. Oh. Well, anyway, it looks like the listening device isn't here. Oh, uh, there's this one over here. Ah, what a lovely bear! Ah, this must be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's a robot! It's a real robot! Yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Dick! Yes? How many horsepowers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um, well, look, it's a bear, so, uh... Um... um. <laughs> okay, so something that's not electronic. Like, one that clearly doesn't have, like, something on it. What about that big fucker? This big guy? This is... This is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so, uh, did you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean? No, not yet. But this bear's eye is. Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Listen, dig this big fella's eye out and see what we've got. No! You, you can't! Such such a violent act! Oh, rip. <laughs> no! It's fucking fake, Pearl. <laughs> it's fucking fake, you dumbass. God, get out once in a while, you dumb piece of shit. Fuck the bear. Uh, that, that's, uh, I mean, that, that's, it's a miniature camera, and it looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer and a, a what do you, a what do you what meter? Transmitter, pal. There wasn't that crazy of a word following uh, meta. It was trans. <laughs> Is this more of that high tech stuff? My God. And we're going to learn about this high tech stuff, like a camera. And a transmitter. <laughs> and the next episode. The next episode. Uh, Make sure to like, subscribe, comment below, hit that, that bell. <laughs> oh god. Oh. oh my god, you destroyed everything. Good thing that was empty. Oh my god.